Hello, Oscillator Sync here. I haven't featured the modulo on the channel for a little while now, um, for no other reason than I've had other stuff to feature, honestly. Um, and because I haven't, and because it has changed a little bit since the last time I have featured it, I thought it might be nice just to do a fairly informal kind of state of the modular kind of video. So talk about what's in the rack at the moment and why, why I like it, how I use it. And um, also towards the end of the video, maybe talk a little bit about how I have been integrating the rack with other gear that I have, um, because although I haven't been showing it on the um, channel, I have been using it as a meditative way to make music, I suppose. Um, yeah, so um, let's just take a real chill walk down Modular Alley and take a look at what's in the rack as of today, because as we know, a modular rack is never actually finished. So before we dive into what's actually in the rack, let's just um, put a little bit of context around what I was trying to achieve with this rack, why I continue to try and achieve with this rack. Um, the first thing, I guess, which it does inform quite a lot of what's in here is that I was trying to create a single sort of uh, musical workstation that was primarily around, I guess, primarily around sort of ambient type sounds, but actually increasingly I've been really enjoying it for doing sort of like more sort of techno type stuff as well, especially when paired with other things. So I was quite strict possibly needlessly strict with myself in terms of sticking with just this um, Rack Brute 3U. So I've got, what, 90, 95 HP to play with or something. Um, and because of that, a lot of the choices that I've made about the modules in here is that I've gone for small things, and perhaps sometimes that means that the ergonomics uh, of actually reaching in there and tweaking things have suffered. I'll admit that, and um, while I would maybe enjoy more space, I think uh, trying to optimise what you can do within uh, a small rack is, is quite an interesting challenge. One of the other things that was really important to me with putting this together was thinking about stereo movement and things being in stereo, so there's a lot of stuff in the rack which is geared towards making sure that I can do that kind of stereo move. Um, because that's particularly important to me when I'm making ambient music in particular. I like there to be some wide movement in there to keep sort of um, catching the ear when the music might otherwise be moving quite slowly. So that's kind of the context of what's going on in here. Um, so maybe let's pull this patch down and talk about what's actually in the rack. So the most sensible way to talk about this rack is probably from left to right, because it's kind of laid out with a logical progression of clocks and modulators, sound sources, modifiers, and then sort of stereo imaging and, and output out the other end. So they, the, the rack kind of flows in that direction anyway. And the first thing that is in the rack is Pamela's new workout from ALM. This, as far as I'm concerned, is as close to a must-have module that exists it will find a home in i think in any sort of rack um there have been various different videos um talking about its functionality divkid obviously has done a really really good one uh red means recording did one more recently as well talking about the, the way that pamela's new workout kind of works it is a it is a clocked thing source um to call it just a clock is massively underselling what it can do it does do that very very well it's a very very stable clock source but the things that it can do on top of that with um like euclidean rhythms um with um, modulating itself self-patching type stuff really really wonderful stuff um so i won't retread that ground so much but in terms of um creating rhythms with it incredible 
Um, it also does clocked modulation sources, so you can have um, LFO sweeps, which um, um, follow the, uh, the the timing of the, the track and everything. One thing that maybe I haven't seen quite so many people talk about that I really like using it for is actually to generate um, random melodies. Because it has some really nice features around that. So I'll just show you that at the very least. So for this example, I'm just going to take output one of PAMS. I'm going to go into the Vault Pro Octave of um, Nano Rings here. Uh, because this will detect changes in uh, pitch and re-trigger automatically. And I'll need another longer patch cable. And we'll just go from the output. Um, I'll take odd and even. I'll just go over here into my output here. And even. So um, what I'll do is I'll come over to the setup for um, number one here and I'll go into the menu by holding down I'm going to set my mode here to random and if I press start now you can hear rings plonking away there lovely now those are just going to be random um, uh, voltages so it's not going to be in a particular scale or anything um, but uh, what we can do here is come across to our uh, quantization mode here the moment it's set to no but we can put it into a scale so maybe I'll go into like a minor pentatonic or something And now we start getting a randomized um, melody here that's all within a particular scale. And we can do stuff now um, like uh, use a Euclidean uh, pattern, perhaps maybe five into eight. And get nice rhythms going on there um, if we want to constrain the range here we could go into um, uh, level and turn that down that will make everything biased towards lower notes because the overall maximum level has been reduced but if we then wanted to constrain it to sort of a more of a mid-range thing we could apply an offset so we could sit everything within a particular range so you can very quickly get into a place where you've got these sort of randomized but controlled melodies um, and you can make use of the Euclidean rhythms in there uh, and using this as kind of like a basis for something that's going on below a, a chord that's, um, that you know is in the right key can be really good. And the other thing that we can do is in the uh, loop setting here we can also um, set this to loop a particular melody so we could maybe set this as a 12 loop and what we should find there we go there's that little figure that we had before and now we've been able to loop a particular um, section here and then you could do stuff like um, uh, put this um, loop control on one of the CV controls and we could treat this a bit like a, um, uh, a, a bit, uh, a shift register rather. Um, and uh, when we put it down to zero, it stops looping and then we could, so we could use one of these sliders here to lock in a particular length, turn it down to let it fill up with new ideas lock it again by sticking it up so when we come across something we like we can bring it into focus so obviously pams is a really really great stable clock source and everything but um i mostly use it for this kind of stuff to generate these sort of semi randomized um scaled melodies um of course it can do all of the other clock stuff as well for doing euclidean rhythms everything it's fantastic I use it a lot for that, especially in more of a um, B 
beat oriented um, setup, but I love it for this. It's a it's a little ideas machine. F- wonderful. So next up in the rack is a Mutable Instruments Stages, which is a fantastic module. Um, I'm going to say that about all of the modules, I think, probably. Um, it can generate envelopes and LFOs and various segments and offsets. It's a really useful all-purpose um, modulation station, if you like. Um, it takes a little bit of learning, I think, to get into the mindset of how to use it but once you kind of get there, it's 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 easy enough to get a handle on. The difference with my stages um, to how it comes um, from the factory is that I've loaded up with the alternate firmware called Keymem. Um, I'll put a link in the description if I remember. Um, this firmware takes stages from being something that I definitely wanted in my rack to something that is indispensable to me because uh, the firmware fixes some of the gripes or implements some of the features that I wished were in here. So um, the two main ones are that the LFOs can now go much slower than they could because they were still a little rapid for like really long ambient droning stuff um, as they were. So we can reduce the rate of the LFOs if we want to. Um, Crucially for me, you can now make things be bipolar. So uh, previously with stages, it would go from zero up to, um, I guess, five or eight volts um now it will go um positive five to to negative five which allows you to sweep things backwards and forwards which most of my modules prefer or the way i like to use them that's more convenient um but i think the biggest change and i haven't listed all of them but the biggest change that i find really really useful i'm a big fan of various types of random modulation and the new firmware introduces a fourth segment type which is a random segment type which can do various things like um, a sloth like random um, uh, modulation generator it can be a shift register as well so you can get repeated patterns in here and it again it just makes everything on stage is just slightly more useful for for my purposes so as an example here now i've got this on a random mode here if i um, press and hold to go into cycling starts flashing like this uh, perhaps we'll patch that i'll uh, just stay with the patch we had already if i patch that into shape and turn up the shape modulation amount which it is already um, give it a bit more speed And start my sound again. So now you can hear that the timer of everything is changing. At the moment it's only going up. You see the yellow light here is only going up. But if we hold and wiggle like that, we now get negative modulation as well. So we can sit this in the middle, turn the attenuator up, and then we're going to go... Uh, which is great um, and uh, well, perhaps I'll just do the same thing on the other one go into looping mode there maybe give this one the position Make it bipolar um, so although you can do all these um, complex um, envelope type tricks with stages, I will often just use it set up as a bunch of LFOs, um, some of which are running in random modes. Um, I use it for the uh, shift register as well. So essentially with this, you can have stages set up to be uh, six Turing machines, more or less. Um which is kind of crazy um, and for certain types of patches especially again thinking more on the sort of beat oriented side of things super super powerful and unlike pams where you're sort of doing a pseudo uh, shift register this one works properly in terms of locking and um, probability of letting new values in so if you've looked at um, any videos on the turing machine you kind of get a feel for what that could do for a patch especially when uh, paired with a quantizer which incidentally uh, with this new firmware the 
orange segments can be set up to quantize uh, to a scale as well uh, and do portamento uh, so you can run a Turing machine segment into a um, step segment and and get um, that classic Turing machine plus quantizer setup all within stages uh, just by using two of the six segments which is kind of crazy um, so yeah if you've got stages and you're comfortable with it um, I would really recommend checking out the um, key mem firmware if you haven't already because like I say it's taken uh, what was a really useful um, utility module and turned it into something that's even more creative than it already was cool so rather conveniently seen as it's already patched in um, uh, next up is, is nano rings um, which is a small sort of minimized clone of the musical instrument rings rings itself is a nice large luxurious uh, module which i would love to have but i just don't have space for in this rack i would i would sort of run out of space really really quickly if i started using all the full-size mutable stuff unfortunately when i build a, a bigger rack then i would probably uh, get some of those as well um both this and beehive next to it were made by a guy called t music who's in bristol so not far down the road from uh from me um and uh, he's been great he's actually going to replace the panel on on beehive for me because he's got these really swish looking new panels um i'll make sure i show it in a video at some point but anyway uh rings is in the rack because i'm a walking cliche and i want to make ambient music therefore i must have a rings in my rack glib but <laughs> probably true so rings is a uh, physical modeling uh, synth um, it does various different types of physical modeling and um, what's really nice about it in terms of sort of getting patches up and running is that we can use it just the way we are we're using just here where it's set up to just detect uh, enough of a change on volts per octave to trigger a new note and what that means is you can use rings as we have been here with just a pitch source as i've got from from pams here and uh, it has various different modes with various different um, um, types of um let's go a bit fast for her various different types of physical modeling like this one for kind of techno stuff as well and various different poly modes which allow us to pan things between the two sides or everything in the middle with more of a stereo movement with position um, um, a lot of people I think maybe overlook the fact that we have a um, second set of modes on this and some of these are really really good if I press and hold on the mode sorry <laughs> try again we do go into alternate modes which do different things so red alternate gives us like a reverbed version which is beautiful and I use this one a lot but the one I think is super useful is the one on green I think it is yikes RIP everyone Uh, so this, some of this modulation is actually a two-op FM voice. Which is really cool. And I've used this for bass lines. And then the orange alternate is the 
a harmonic resonating strings, I think. really nice as well so it always kind of sounds good used in this way but a lot of the time I actually um, don't use it as it's as an instrument like this I will often run things into it instead and use it as a traditional resonator so um, if I just take the output of this go into in So now I'm processing a sample through a resonator. Which can be... kind of really interesting. It's still giving it the pitch as well. If we take that uh, volt per octave out perhaps. process other sources through it. And that can be really cool as well for creating the basis for other drones. And often what I'll do if I'm making use of a sample is I will molt the sample and send it into rings as a sort of alternate version of that sample. Yes. So next up in the rack is uh, Beehive, which is a minimized version of musical instruments, Platts. So Beehive is in here because it is a complete voice if you want to use it that way, and it does a bunch of different things. Um, uh, so it's just a useful module to have um, in order to get lots of things done potentially. So I'm just going to give it volts per octave and also pop a trigger in here. Uh, pop that in there and we'll just take an output uh, to have a listen to that. Uh, I'll just go from the output, if I can actually find it and go into here. And off the reverb for a second. And yeah, what, what this gives you is, is a bunch of different types of, of sounds. Um, and at the moment I'm using it with a trigger, which means that I am um, using the built-in VCA. But if you take away the trigger, it's just going to drone and you can run it into a VCA or low pass gate, whatever you want to do. And I think, honestly, Platz has probably been uh, covered many, many times. It's just one of those things that, again, if you're building a rack like I am, which is um, short on space, it's one of those ways that you can get a lot of utility and a lot of different sounds and indeed um, not need a separate VCA or filter for it necessarily chord mode you know a staple of techno uh, racks all over the world <laughs> the, uh, uh, this is the, uh, let's turn this down. <laughs> the voice. Uh, I've actually used this in a jam quite successfully, but you'd have to put some thought into it. 
Uh, if you have a micro freak, you'll probably recognise a lot of the sounds on Beehive because uh, that's making use of a lot of these algorithms as well. We have also got various different um, sort of percussive and noise um, modes here. Uh, I particularly like um, if we take out some of this stuff here and um, that's this one. Some of these noise modes are really useful for triggering other things. Like this one here with the sort of bandpass filter vibe to it. Um, if we instead um, take that into rings, for example, I suspect this was almost entirely designed in order to trigger rings. It sounds great doing that. Right. Very pretty. But you can also um, use it to do um, like uh, kick drums. Um, so if I just go into the trigger here and we come a couple down. Got some mini rings in there. So in a pinch, if I need a kick drum, we can get it from Platts. If I need a snare. And of course with the aux modes, you've got often quite different alternative sounds as well. Cymbals, hi-hats. So like I say, in a pinch, then we could modulate the morph there to get open and shut sounds. We can get pretty funky pretty quickly. So, I mean, as I say, uh, a lot of utility in a small package um, and a lot of applications depending on where you want to sit it. So you can use it as a basic oscillator, you can use it for effects, you can use it with the noise modes to trigger other things, we can use it for um, for um, beats as well and, and of course you can also modulate the um, model as well. So if we stick this random bit of modulation into the model here. We can do stuff like that. Which, depending on what you're trying to achieve, could be really, really great, especially if you started panning that around, um, which we could do in this setup, but I'll get to that in a little bit. So yeah, it's just a really useful friend to have around. And I think that's probably one of the main um, themes of the whole rack is that there are lots of really useful little friends. So next up in the rack is the 2HP VCO. So this is a VCO which is based on the same trip that a lot of VCOs are based on that I'm now blanking on the name of. It's the classic one with uh, your triangle um, saw and then a pulse width modulatable square wave output. This is a pure VCO, it's not a full voice uh, all on its own, so you do need to pair it with a uh, filter VCA or a, a low pass gate. But in terms of uh, why it's in the rack, well, I just realized that um, when I was using, for example, rings as a resonator or I was 
uh, using distinct, which I'll get to for something other than sample playback, I was often finding myself sort of lacking a synth voice. So um, this was just a way for me to uh, quickly get uh, another synth voice, really. Um, and it's a nice sounding VCO in 2HP uh, that's certainly in the second hand market. Um, really pretty cheap so um, no great complaints uh, there and it just does VCO things yeah, can't complain give it some pulse width modulation keep it back happy Need to attenuate that. That's one of the downsides of having something so small is that you are going to uh, lose out on um, some of the utility there. But you know. Like I say, it's a it's a it's a VCO in two HP. It sounds good. Uh, you can use the different outputs uh, at the same time. So um, we could take the uh, triangle out to a separate um, output and have that pulse away in a different rhythm to create rhythmic interest. It's got FM, uh, which is exponential, I think. So um, it's better for doing bell tones. Uh, it's got sync there for doing sync sounds. If you have another VCO you could use for that. It's a VCO uh, and it's tiny and uh, that's kind of useful to have around. So not much more to say about it. It's in there because I needed another um, another sound source uh, and, and so it is. So next up is a Disting Mark IV. So a Disting, if you're not aware, is an everything module. It can be configured to do a bunch of different things. You have three um, inputs. Z is usually control. These two are often audio inputs, but not necessarily. And then you have two outputs. And it can do, God, it can do everything. It can be a VCO. It can playback samples. It can be a tuner. It can be a precision adder. It can uh, be a VCA. It can uh, be a quantizer. It can do... Uh, uh, Eurac to Buchler, um CV conversions. It can do stuff. It can do lots and lots of stuff. And it has a very minimal user interface, which means that it is a module that I can never remember how to use when I want to use it. Um, and as a result, I mostly use it for sample playback, occasionally quantizing, and uh, getting a ref reference pitch for tuning oscillators. And that's fine, because um, even if it just did sample playback, it has the various different sample playback modes, which you, you still struggle to get in 4HP. And it's just one of those modules that if you have a small rack like I do, you have this compromise of trying to cram as much functionality in um, as, as possible. And this does that. If I don't have a module that I need, the likelihood is that this thing can do it. And it still gets firmware updates, which add new functionality. I'm not even running the most recent firmware uh, update actually, and the offset generator, um, you can now basically, I think, replicate this module in here, which you couldn't do previously, which is partially why I got this module. Um, it's just one of the, it was one of those things that this thing couldn't do quite in the same way, but it can now, I think. But I mostly use it for sample playback. And for that, it's um, good. <laughs> it does stereo, it does dual samples. So you can um, have a stereo file or two mono files and have them both running at once. Um, uh, it has various um, playback modes. So you can play things back at half speed, at double speed. Um, you can reverse stuff. It's just one of those things that it's just very useful to have. So here it is playing like some piano sample or something, which is slowed down. 
and I think this is in dual mode, so if we plugged in uh, B here and set that to another output or even the other side of the same output perhaps we should find that we have two different loops gone at once maybe can't remember what mode it's in honestly um why isn't that making a noise there um oh, i was going to turn it up stupid that's why learn to use your modular perhaps Okay, so I think this is just in stereo mode. So now we've got a nice wide stereo image there. But we can also do dual um, playback where you have two different audio files playing back. Lots of stuff that you can you can do with it. I mostly use it for sample playback, but that is uh, definitely not the only thing that you can do with it. Um, but the user experience in terms of the interface is not the greatest. Um, it can't be with all this functionality crammed into this, so I always have to go back to the manual to remember how to do anything, um, which is a bummer. But if I wanted all of this functionality in multiple modules, I would have spent more than I've spent on this entire rack. So you can complain a little bit, but not, not that much. Right, next up is the Tertiary Arena from Noise Engineering. This is a distortion. In fact, it's not a distortion, it's three distortions. This one, this one, and this one. You have three knobs, uh, they're not CV controllable, so if you want to adjust the gain, you're gonna have to um, put a VCA before each input. Um, but you can take a sound and mangle it in various different ways. Uh, so I'll just take one side of this, go into the in here, go into the out and into attenuator so we don't blow things up and then from the attenuator to the output and now we have a doomified version this is with the gain down to zero of that loop and you can absolutely mash it uh, so each of these circuits has a separate input and output so we can tr try each of them internally they all have different flavors i like that one on samples especially slower samples because it doesn't totally fuzz out but gives you all of that lovely sustain and grit filter that down with a bandpass filter happy days um and then we've got this last one here which is like a fuzz circuit which really blows out the top end as you go to the middle of the game super um, if you plug into the top uh, each circuit is normal to the next so you can absolutely smash it through all <laughs> three at once Yes! <laughs> ah, goodness me. Okay. <laughs> Good. As I say, you've got no um, gain control there, but you could put this through a VCA, and by lowering the gain by the VCA, you could lower the amount of uh, distortion. What I really love this for is um, because you have these different circuits here, you can multi signal to these various different circuits and um and do stuff with like uh, pinging stuff and panning stuff so uh if i grab a splitter we'll go into that one and we'll also go in to the next one and that'll break the normalization between the output of one and the input of the next and we take these two out separately. Maybe two, two sides of this. Like that. Uh, 
grab a gate pattern. There we go. Plonk that into an output. Uh, create, quickly create another gate pattern here. Bear with me. Pams for pa for rhythms, as previously discussed. Awesome. That's some CV and take that to our output. I'm just going to the other side of the stereo here. And because you've got these sort of different flavors of distortion, even though we've got the same input signal there, by taking those out and treating them as two sides of the stereo spectrum, you can get different enough sounds that they kind of sit different. I mean, if we just grab the kick drum off Beehive, We're getting there, aren't we, right? So I love using this to take a single source and then just sort of squash it in different ways and be able to treat that single source as two separate stereo things. Again, one of the main things that I was interested in when I was building this was thinking about stereo movement and that's just a way where we can get to that kind of stage pretty quickly. I love this module. Um, I use it loads. Um, taking pinged um, filters into this and using them as drums. Mm, superb. Yeah, good stuff. Um, really, really like it. Um, they do a bunch of different distortion um, modules. The new digital one looks really, really interesting, but I don't have space for it at the moment, but I suspect that'll be one that I grab when I do find some space. So uh, next up is uh, either 410 or Atena, depending on how you want to, to pronounce it from WMD. This is a four channel attenuator, which is you know, it's a four channel attenuator. It lets you turn signals down, uh, which is a useful thing to do sometimes. We've done it multiple times already. One of the things I really appreciate about this is um, that uh, you have the signal light on each of the sliders, so you can see how much signal is coming in as well. That's not what the output signal is, it's the signal coming in. It's just one of those touches that I really, really appreciate on a module. Uh, it lets me know that stuff is uh, patched up properly. The other thing that this does, however, that is really, really useful, um, that is the reason I got this over other attenuators, is that if you don't patch anything in to uh, an input, you have a 5 volt normalized output, which means you have to have a slider for controlling other things. So for example, if I wanted to have control over um, pulse width modulation on the VCO here, just on a slider, because there's no knob for it, so this is a perfect example, well done. Thinking of this example on the fly. Uh, so if I just pop this in here, uh, we should, um, oh, what am I doing? Output of the... So now I have pulse width, modula pulse width modulation on a slider. So just one of those extra bits of utility um, Again, trying to squeeze as much out of a small space as possible. Um, so yeah, it's an attenuator plus a, um, a fixed signal generator, which is very useful. 
So next up um, from Takarb, this is the 2LPG. This is the version 2, um, and this is two low-pass gates squeezed into 2HP. And it's completely passive. No power cable on the back of this at all. It's not taking up any of my uh, power strips. And it sounds brilliant. Um, you've heard it already um, multiple times in uh, this video. Uh, it's it's just a really good sounding <laughs> low pass gate and it's passive and tiny and cheap. So cheap. It's like um, like 45 quid to get the, the version 2, uh, even less um, potentially if you, if you get the old one. But, you know, you plug a signal in, you take a signal out, and you either hit it with modulation or the way I usually do it is I hit it with um, gates. Uh, so if we just grab one of these here, put some gates into it. It's got three different tone modes. In the middle, it just acts like a passive VCA, so it's not doing any attenuation to the uh, top end got a brighter version and a duller version. Um, it's very responsive to uh, the level of the um, input here. So if I turn this down, not only is it going to get quieter, but it'll get duller as well. Very more, very more obvious in that mode. And for doing rhythmic stuff or uh, for doing typically very plucky stuff, it's just brilliant um, and so cheap and so small. Uh, I recommend that you get one <laughs> would be my recommendation. I use it all the time. It's probably the uh, module that is never not used. So next up is the ADAX 604 dual filter. This is two filters in 6HP. Um, it can work in stereo or as dual mono. I've done a whole video on this module, so I won't go into it too much. Um, one of the things I do uh, appreciate, though, is how things get uh, normaled and also that it's kind of dirty when you push it and it gets dirty quite quickly, uh, which may be completely um, not what you want frankly, um, in some situations, but in a lot of my applications, having a little bit of dirt there is really, really useful. So it crunches up quite quickly. So you might want to attenuate going into it. But you've got outputs for high pass, band pass and low pass, and they can be used simultaneously. So you can do spectral panning and stuff like that. Um, this is in dual mode, but we can also set it in stereo mode where it will follow channel one, but you can still offset channel two, so you can get a bit of a change between them. You're hearing the um, band pass here. It's normaled the input across both sides, so we don't need to split or anything. You can hear that it's crunching up there, but the output is hottish there and the resonance is up it also sounds really good when you ping it for getting like kick drum sounds so um if i uh change to this so we'll just have the band pass there um i'll just send it a trigger so not even like proper um not even like a uh proper signal just to trigger here into the input it has a lovely woody kind of vibe to it and as I mentioned um, one of the things I like to do with that is um, run this pinged filter into Tersi uh, usually the second actually and you can kind of get a bit more grit out of it run 
it into both. Just the top one. With the light gain, we're introducing some noise, but what's a bit of noise? So yeah, um, again, nice thing to have. All works in stereo, which, as I said before, is kind of a key part of my setup. So, yeah. So next up is the Dope for A113-2. Uh, this is essentially a two-channel VCA, uh, but the difference is that this one can also invert the signal as well. I originally got this to uh, do some additional panning tricks. Um, I don't need it for that so much these days, but um, certainly having a way to attenuate uh, amplify and invert a signal is just a useful thing to have. If anything, I probably don't have enough VCAs in this rack now. I used to have the uh, eight channel uh, dope for, um, which was uh, didn't have any controls. It was just uh, eight inputs, eight outputs, and eight CVs for each of the channels. It had some mixing and summing on it, and that was a really really useful um, module. But um, not having the um, a control for the initial value of the uh, initial level, I should say, of the VCA meant that I had to use a channel of um, 410 to, um, to, to do that, to have an initial value. And then I would have to mix the signal somehow, the CV signal somehow. So I ended up using a lot of modules to do something quite simple, um, which I can now just do um, on this. Um, I It remains to be seen if I am short of VCAs now. Um, the nice thing is, um, as we'll see when we get to the next module, that I do kind of have some extra VCAs as well. But yeah, it's an inverting VCA. It's really useful to have VCAs. I probably don't have enough VCAs. This is two VCAs. So we come to my most recent acquisition, which is a Make Noise X Panel. I've wanted one of these since I first started building my rig and um, couldn't find one for love nor money. I ended up buying this one secondhand for almost new price because I was fed up of not owning one. Um, I used to have two ADAC panners. Um, one of those broke, which left me with not enough panners. Um, so I, that's what kind of spurred me to, to get the X-Pan. It's a um, two-channel panner crossfader with an additional stereo input with a VCA. So it's kind of a five-input um, mixer with one of those inputs being stereo plus a panner. It's fantastic. Let me um, grab um, some rings probably. Uh, again, we'll come come back around to rings, why not? Uh, that was my Vox Proactive, and we'll just use the Vox Proactive. And I will come into A here. That's already patched into my output. So um, you can pan, I've patched it backwards, that's annoying. Let's unpatch that and patch it the right way around again. There we go. Um, so you can pan things. Uh, you can crossfade things, but if there's nothing in the other side, um, that acts as a VCA. Both the panning and the crossfade are C viable. So this is part of the reason that I don't need an additional VCA is I can plug stuff into um, the crossfade, uh, or into B side of the crossfade. And if I apply positive CV, it's going to act like a VCA. Um, and I can start panning things around as well. But let's patch in some panning. Uh, one of these will do. bipolar so that should be fine so we can get stuff panning around for us uh, let's just use the random one actually so we get some lovely stereo movement there uh, if we were to work with something a bit more VCAE, actually, I'll tell you what, let's uh, let's 
yeah, maybe on this uh, next one, if we take um, our triangle wave into there. Oops, into there, sorry. And if I convert uh, this into a just a triangle wave here, if I plug this into the crossfade now, you can hear that we can treat that as a VCA. So we have a VCA here, or another output here and put it into the other side. We can cross fade between those two things as well. So cross fading, panning, treat things as VCAs as well. Um, and then we also have an aux input here, which is a stereo input. Well, say just a stereo input, having a stereo input is really, really good. And we also have a control over the aux level, so there is a stereo VCA on this as well, which means that I don't lose a channel in my um, uh, mixer. Uh, essentially, I can just plug what was going to go in there in here, and I now have VCA control over it as well. Uh, you can do lots of stuff with... Um, if I take this triangle here and we put it into the pan instead... We can do um, audio rate panning and get all these lovely sidebands. So it's kind of like a st stereo ring mod. Which is really, really cool. Might want to attenuate that, really. But yeah, I love this module. There we go, a bit cleaner. See, it's panning, VCAing, mixing. Uh, everything can be done at audio rate for lots of other nice stuff as well. Give us a reverb, why not? Very fun. Cool, 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 cool. So just to finish off with the boring part, I guess, of the um, of the system, uh, we have a uh, Bifaco mix, which is a um, four-channel um, stereo mixer. There's no control over the... Um, the mix levels in terms of VCAs or anything, or whether it's it's actually four channel with volume controls and then a fifth channel which is an aux in which comes in at Unity which allows you to daisy chain stuff. Um, strictly speaking, I could probably get away with uh, plugging the X pan into the aux in, in a lot of cases. Just haven't in in this one. Um, it's a mixer. Um, I wish I had mute controls on it. Um, I would certainly welcome having VCA. Um, control over this but in 6hp i'm probably not going to find that um, there are some modules which do give you a bit more control uh, in this size but don't give you as many channels for example so this is what i've got at the moment um, it's not always ergonomically the best thing to be trying to bring sounds in and out with these controls here um, so it might get changed out i don't know yet um, struggling to find something which gives me as many channels 
um, in the space, but with more functionality. I don't, well, there's literally no, nowhere to put more inputs, for example. Um, yeah, and then that goes into the Bifaco out module, which is just an output module which brings things onto um, a line level. You've also got a headphones out uh, with a separate volume control and a Q input which you can send to the headphones so that you can, for example, silently tune oscillators if you're in the middle of a performance. Um, it's fine. It's a bit noisy sometimes, especially if you can't give it a properly um, um, grounded output. So, for example, I can't use this with my um, microcosm because um, it ends up um, creating a ground loop because it doesn't have a proper um, balanced stereo input. So, it, again, uh, there are other options. Um, I might try some out at some point, but for the moment, it's it's working okay for me um, in most situations. So, just quickly before we finish, um, just talking about uh, integrating this with other uh, parts of my setup. Um, obviously, um, with my Mini Brute 2S, it works really nicely. We can send uh, clock into Pamela or out of Pamela into the Mini Brute to synchronize them. That works really well. Anything with CV and gate is going to integrate with this um, nicely because we can just use PAMs to synchronize things or use those things to, to synchronize PAM. Essentially, PAM has um, clock and run inputs. One of the things that I got hold of to um, play with this a little bit more with my uh, Electron gear in particular was the CVOCD, uh, which is a little box here which uh, takes MIDI in and then you have um, four CV outputs and then um, 12 um, gate or clock outputs uh, which can all be configured um, uh, to do whatever you want. So in my case um, A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4 are um, channels 11 through, I think it's 11, 12, 13, 14, I think that's how I've got it set up. Um, for both pitch and gate. So uh, on the MIDI, MIDI channels on my um, uh, on my Electron gear, I can just uh, plug this in by MIDI. And as long as I'm sending stuff to those uh, MIDI channels, I get the uh, pitch information out on here and I can use that to sequence stuff in the rack. And then uh, uh, over here, these top gate signals are just related to notes on channel, um, one of the other channels, I forget which one in particular, but that basically allows me to use another channel that's like a drum se uh, sequencer as long as I'm treating C1 as, as a kick, D1 as a, a snare and, and so on. And then on the last line here, I've got various different MIDI clock outs. Um, I had real trouble with this. Um, in theory, output 12 should be giving me 24 pulses per quarter note so I can properly synchronize PAMs, but it either drifts or skips sometimes, which means that it constantly desyncs, so I have to run it at a, at a lower clock rate, which is fine. PAMS will um, begrudgingly work with that, but um, it does complain um, that the clock is unstable constantly. Um, so what I did get, um, I, what I forgot was that the Digitone and the Digitap, the um, second MIDI output can be configured to do DIN sync, uh, which... Uh, works very very well that gives you a 24 pulses per quarter note output and a run signal and ALM uh, sell this cable or you can make one yourself but it wasn't expensive so I just grabbed one anyway DIN sync goes in here it looks like MIDI but um, because it's a DIN connector but it's a DIN sync um, signal instead you plug this into the clock and run inputs on PAMS and it synchronizes beautifully Perfect. So I use this to synchronize my Electron gear, and then I use CVOCD to send MIDI data out. So anyway, thank you so much for indulging me as I've explored my modular rack as it stands at the start of 2022. Obviously, these things are never a finished uh, thing, but uh, this is where it is at the moment, and I'm pretty happy with, with what it does, with um, a couple of things that could be improved, I think, maybe. Um, I hope it was interesting. Uh, perhaps uh, you picked up some inspiration for some modules that you want to try out, or possibly some alternate firmware for modules that you already earn that you want to check out. Um, uh, if you're uh, not into modular, perhaps this has raise some questions about whether you should get into modular. Certainly, uh, 
if you're lucky it's dissuaded you from getting into modular because uh, that's certainly the cheaper option um yes but um as always thank you so much for watching um and until next time take care